Welcome back. Prime Minister of Israel Benjamin Netanyahu has said the Israeli strike that killed at least 45 Palestinian people in the southern Gaza city of Rafa was the result of a, quote, tragic mistake. This, as the White House assesses whether the attack violated President Biden's, quote, red line. For more on this, let's welcome in former Undersecretary of Defense Robert Wilkie and Israel's Special Foreign uh -huh. Minister Envoy Flora Hassan uh -huh. Good morning to both of you. So, Flora, I know this is adding to the growing criticism Israel is receiving worldwide over its handling of this war. What do you expect to come from the investigation into the strike? Well, first of all, Israel is a country that has a very strong investigation scrutiny. We investigate ourselves. This is why the ICC decision last week not only breaks with protocol, but was completely absurd. We're in the middle of one of the most complicated war terrains that exists in the world. We are dealing with an enemy that embeds itself very, very deliberately within the civilian population. We're in a war. Accidents happen in a war. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we have casualties in a war. But in terms of how Israel is executing the war, I don't think there's any country on earth that can talk about the casualties the minimum casualties that are happening with this war, almost one to one from terrorist to civilian. Nobody can talk about these type of numbers. And whilst this incident was particularly tragic, it was mainly tragic because Hamas terrorists embed themselves within that civilian population. Yeah, exactly. And Mr. Secretary, the White House is assessing if Israel violated Biden's red line. What could this mean then for a possible shipment of more aid and weapons? Well, well, look, let's let's look at what the Biden administration is doing. I've argued for, for months now that they're in the Hamas protection racket. Um, the, the Secretary of State just said that uh, that Israel is contributing to a mass famine. And, and I want to, I mean, it's so ridiculous that only uh, some Ivy League uh, protester could believe it. Let me go back to what the minister was saying as a military person. No, no army on the planet. No defense ministry on the planet does more to alleviate civilian suffering than the Israelis. Just think about it. In the last week, the IDF has evacuated 900,000 uh, Gazans out of harm's way. And as the minister said, what we're dealing with is not only the most difficult terrain encountered in warfare, urban warfare, we're dealing with a, a death cult that has used its own civilians as shields, that has deliberately taken the, the food that this latest Biden folly, the peer, has delivered. Hamas wow. has taken that food and kept it from the very civilians they say they are protecting. Um, Biden wants, I, I'm convinced now, Biden wants Hamas to survive so that he can revive this nonsensical two-state two solution that has been the obsession of the Obama-Biden clique now for almost 20 years. In just about 15 seconds, and you mentioned the food and the aid that's being delivered to that Gaza pier. It's been a logistical nightmare, though, because uh, you mentioned that Hamas is taking this. The good people of Gaza aren't receiving this, correct? Well, that, that's correct. I, yeah. Go ahead, Minister. Absolutely. What I wanted to say is that half a million tons of food have gone in since October 7th, which is actually more food that went in before October 7th. Yeah. And the question is not how many entry points, there's enough entry points. The question is not what the volume of food is, there's enough food. The question is who is distributing it? And here you can blame, of course, Hamas, but you can also blame these so-called international yeah. humanitarian aid organizations led by the very incompetent and biased UN. They're not doing their jobs. Exactly. They're supposed to all right. We have to leave it there. We're out of time. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back.